love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gathered to greet your dearly beloved Son, when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our King, and when he comes again may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all of this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him had continued to spread the word that he had called Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone out after him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us go forth in peace.
blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Good morning. And welcome to all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is good to be with all of you here in God's house this morning. We'd like to welcome especially our visitors who are here with us today. It's an honor that you are worshiping with us, and I pray that you would come and be with us again very soon. The order of worship today is Divine Service Setting 4. It begins this morning in the front of your hymnal on page 203. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sin, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We pause for a moment of silent confession before our God. And we say, Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Sing together today the words of the intro, which you will find printed on the insert in your bulletin. to 
take upon himself our flesh, and to suffer death upon the cross, mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience, and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns in you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May you see it as we receive God's holy word. The Old Testament reading for the Sunday of the Passion is from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore you to double. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, for the glory of God, our choir will present their selection for the day, the words of which can be found on an insert in your Lord.
gospel lesson for today, the congregation may remain seated. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, 26th and 27th chapters. You still have your parts? We go quickly from the celebration of Jesus coming into his city to realizing that he has gone there to suffer and die for us. When Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the passion is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. And the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at the table. When the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always will have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. And pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in her memory. One of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he sought an opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, Is it I will? And he answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe be to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? And he said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take ye, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of all, drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of this vine until the day when I drink it new with you in the Father's kingdom. And when they had sung him, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. And Jesus went with them to the place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little while farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter again into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, 
He went away and prayed for a third time, saying the same words again. And then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. And rise, and let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. And then later on, after Jesus had been betrayed, now Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. And then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear many things that they testify against you? But he gave no answer, not even a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had it then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in the dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? And they all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? And they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourself. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and our children. And then he released to them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him and put scarlet robe on him, and twisted together a crown of thorns. And they put in his head, put on his head, and put in a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And spit up, and took the reed and struck him on the head. <coughs> When they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. And they compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. The two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So all the chief priests and the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others and he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Hey! Hey! Lama Sabachthani! Which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. 
The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tomb after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake, took place. They, lift, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please rise. Having heard the word of God, we now confess our Christian faith in the words of Nicene Creed, found on page 206. I believe in one God, the Father of all maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us men and 
governor again to said to them, which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, and what shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? And they all said, let him be crucified. <coughs> we see no justice in what happened in our reading. The whole trial of Jesus Christ before the Sanhedrin held during the dark of night was illegal according to Old Testament law. Pilate, even though he is the representative of the most powerful empire on earth at the time, is a weakling. He condemns a man who he knows to be innocent for nothing more than to keep the peace for political expediency. A murderer, Barabbas, is released from prison without paying for his crime. The leaders of God's church reject God's Messiah and throw him out as the scriptures predicted that the stone the builders reject would become the cornerstone. The disciples, who had sworn not long before that they would go with Jesus even to the point of death, are now nowhere to be found. They cower in fear. Soldiers, who should be enforcing the peace, instead are murdering the Prince of Peace. And the crowds who had just cheered for Jesus five days earlier, now call out for his blood. There is no justice in what we hear today. Let me rephrase that. There is no human justice in what we hear today. But there is justice, divine justice. We need to put it together from Scripture. Scripture says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Scripture says that the wages of sin is death. So by God's design, there is divine justice in what our Savior suffers. God, His punishment for sin is death. All mankind has fallen into sin, and therefore we also fall under that sentence of death. You do, and I do. And God never overlooks, nor does God ever just dismiss sin. Unlike so many false preachers today, unlike society today, who say that God accepts you just the way you are, that is a lie. Because God cannot accept you the way that you are, because you're a sinner. You revel in your sin. You enjoy your sin. You identify your whole being as that sinner that you are. You are, as a natural-born person, a blind, dead enemy of God, and God cannot accept you that way. In His justice, you must be destroyed. And proclaiming that law message today and its consequences to you, that is divine justice. Sin must receive the ultimate punishment and we are all guilty. But here is the good news for you today. The three little words. Barabbas was released. This is good news for all of us because all of us, all of we are Barabbas. The name Barabbas literally means son of a father. And we are all sons of a father. We are sons of our father Abraham or Adam. We are sons of our father Adam and therefore we have inherited from that father all of the sin of the world and all of our sins as well. Jesus also said, 
said in Scripture, of all of those who oppose him, you have your father, the devil. And it is your will to do that father's desire. Well, we are all by our sinful nature opposed to Jesus. We were all born in Satan's kingdom of darkness and sin, and he is by our sinful nature our father. We are Barabbas. We are sons of the Father. Adam and Satan. By the fallen nature into which we were born. And we are just as guilty of death. Maybe even more so. Than was Barabbas. But Barabbas. Was released. The whole fallen world had a choice to make that day put before them by Pilate. And that choice, because of sin, was probably never really in doubt. Pilate put before the people that day the choice, Barabbas or Jesus? Preacher or patriot? Rabbi or rebel? He who loved his enemies, he who hates his enemies, the prince of life, or a murderer. So the guilty chose the guilty. Because sin always wants to choose sin. Sin wants sin to live. Sin wants to set sin free so that sin can do, do whatever sin wants to do. And sin wants to kill the one who in their eyes is trying to spoil all their fun. So Barabbas was released and Jesus was condemned. The innocent was traded for the guilty. The baying wolf of Satan is heard through the voices of all the sinful children there present. His blood be on us and on our children. And so Barabbas was released. But just as Barabbas was released, not because Pilate waved some kind of magic wand and made everything just go away, but rather Pilate, or Pilate released Barabbas because someone else had to die in his place. And so it is with all of us. Barabbas was freed because Jesus died instead. And so too are we free. Our sin and our death penalty does not just magically go away by the will of God. Or rather, someone else had to die in our place. There is no human justice in what happened to Jesus, but it had to happen nonetheless so that you and I could be saved. As always is, though, with God's justice comes God's mercy. Scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. For our sake, Scripture says, Thou made him who had no sin to be sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. On this Passion Sunday, we proclaim that Jesus Christ is both the justice of God and the mercy of God. When Jesus stepped down into the Jordan River there with John to be baptized, he identified with all sinners, with you and with me. And because of that, the cross was the necessary end. He didn't overlook our sin. He took our sin. He didn't waive our punishment. He paid our punishment. He didn't leave us to kind of work it out ourselves. He didn't leave us to our deserved end. Instead, he loved us to the end. With his last breath, he said, tell us something. It's 
finished. I have done it all for you. He doesn't need us, therefore, to go out and try and live our own plan of salvation, that we try to plot on top of that, to live our own lives and doing good works, to try and earn our place with Him. No, He looks at you and me like He looked at the thief on the cross that day, and said, so truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The thief could do nothing for his salvation, and neither can you. But God, in his mercy, saves you through Jesus Christ. Jesus took the Father's verdict against our sin upon himself. The sinless Son of God was sacrificed for us. He took our place on the cross so that the Father's mercy could be ours forever. Yes, on that day that was both completely awful and yet infinitely wonderful. The whole world, the whole world caused Jesus' death. And the whole world threw Jesus out with the cries of crucify. The old Lent hymn asks, were you there when they crucified my Lord? And the answer is yes. Emphatically yes. Because it is we who made it necessary for Jesus to die. Because of God's infinite love. On that Friday that we all good, the universal rejection of Jesus was on full display. But that was all part of God's plan of what was necessary for our salvation. The psalmist wrote, Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The king of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing. You see, God knew that all of this would happen. God knew our sinfulness. God knew that we would all in our sin rage against Him. That we would reject our Savior Jesus. And in the divine plan, that is what leads to the universal atonement by Jesus. For the sins of the whole world. And the universal salvation that is available to all through Jesus. He who was rejected by the Jew and Gentile alike will be exalted as the Savior of the whole world, Jew and Gentile alike. And that's you. And that is me. For God so loved the world in this way that he gave up his only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And one more thing. On that day, we heard that the people all cried out, His blood be on us and on our children. And then Pilate released for them the rabbits and had them scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. His blood be on us. Good. And that blood, you have been baptized. The cry of bloodlust became prophetically the truth of holy baptism. Jesus' blood truly is on us and on our children. And in it we have been washed clean of our sin. We have been snatched away from our evil and abusive father, Satan, and made children of our loving and merciful God. The guilt that was ours as natural born sinners is now the redemption of spirit born children washed in that blood. We who are baptized into the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have been washed clean in the blood of the Lamb, and we are no longer Barabbas, sons of a father. We are rather sons of the Father. Through his work, and by faith in Christ Jesus. This Passion Sunday, the law of God convicts us. Convicts us of the fact that we are sinners. 
that we have rejected Jesus in thought, word, and deed, that we love being sinners. But this Passion Sunday, the gospel of God reminds us that Jesus died, but that body that was laid in the tomb will not remain there. Jesus will rise. And our baptism unites us to his death and his resurrection. So that the penalty that he paid on the cross is the payment for all of our sins. His resurrection and victory over death is your resurrection and victory over death now and for all eternity. This forgiveness that he speaks to us every Sunday in absolution is the door of heaven being flung wide open for us to come through. This supper, this supper, of which he is both priest and victim, will sustain us until the day when we are with him in paradise forever. This Passion Sunday proclaims to us that there can be no Easter without Good Friday. So my friends, will you not walk with me this week? Will you not walk with your Savior this week? <coughs> through the Passion, through Holy Thursday, through Good Friday, on our way to Resurrection Sunday, all the time remembering together, my fellow sinners, that the sinless Son of God was sacrificed so that we could be saved. Enjoy me say that. Amen. 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 Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we will gather our offerings to the Lord. And I ask you to register your attendance in God's house this morning by sending your name on the pad at the end of your view. Along with the prayer system in your bulletin for today, we've had these special prayer requests for Kathy Cole undergoing cancer treatments. We pray for the family, uh, the quick family, upon the loss of their mother suddenly due to heart failure. She was very young we pray for the comfort of her family and her friends in this time of loss. We pray a prayer of thanksgiving for Katie Seymour that uh, the pits for her cancer in her lymph nodes were found to be without cancer. Praise God. Let us rise now to lift our prayer and praise to God our Father. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the Holy Church, as she embarks upon this holiest week of the church year, that she may be defended against the assaults of Satan, may boldly proclaim Christ and Him crucified, and behold her King coming to her humbly, hidden via the holy word and sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. For our Christian lives, that we would be granted faithfulness in times of temptation, repentance and forgiveness when we fall, love for all our brothers and sisters in Christ, reconciliation with those from whom we are alienated, and boldness to confess the faith we have in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For the members of this congregation and for our pastors, John Jenkins and Carl Beckwith, that trusting in him who gave himself humbly as a sacrifice for us, we would humbly give ourselves in service to him and the people of this world that we would shout our hosannas of welcoming praise, and that we would never fail to trust Christ whose passion provides our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For all whom our Father has given authority in civil government, that God would guide their decisions and desires so that life is defended, justice upheld, and the will of him before whom all knees will bow is done. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who live without faith in Christ, that the Holy Spirit would call them to repentance and give them the gift of faith to believe in the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And for the work done by our missionaries, the Lawson and Federowitz families, to bring that saving message of Jesus to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For those stricken by disease, for those enduring famine and natural disasters, for those in bondage, for those who are sick, 
shut in, grieving, recovering, or who have any need, especially for those who have requested our prayers, including Pam, Willard, Linda, Cindy, Terry, Chris, Faye, Marcia, Frida, Jerome, Linda, Kathy, and the Quick family, and also a prayer of thanksgiving for Katie for the good news that she had received. That our Heavenly Father would hear their pleas, meet their needs, rejoice in their thanksgiving, relieve their suffering, and lead them to rejoice in Him who never fails us in our time of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for those who receive the Holy Supper of our Lord today, that they would eat His body and drink His blood in repentance and faith, and that they would be strengthened to love others as Christ has loved them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament from beginning on page 208. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right and salutary, that we should in all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
rise and sing together the number of the minutes on the page to ponder that.